if inflation stays high for a longer period of time, you are going to see silver rush up and eventually it will outperform gold like historically it has. It's just this period of uncertainty with the economy and likely recession is keeping it under wraps. Gareth Soloway discusses their positive outlook for gold and how it will outperform other assets due to fear and instability. He mentions that gold is putting in a bull flag that started in 2020 and is expected to have a big move up. He compares the current pattern of gold to the 1970s and predicts that it will have a 4x or 3x return over a five to six year span. Your outlook for gold, though. Yeah, is still so, very positive. You still hold so the view that, that gold will outperform other assets this year. Yes, and I continue to be in that camp, and it's having a beautiful move up today on the day. Obviously, fear, any sort of fear, instability. Number one, people run into the U.S. dollar right now. Number two, gold is that recipient. And weirdly enough, I know we'll get to it, but recently Bitcoin has been the recipient as well, which is really fascinating to see. But for me, gold is putting in a bull flag that started in 2020. And at some point, this is going to bust out to the upside and have a big move up. If you look at the 1970s chart, this is the same pattern price. In fact, I'll show this real quick. So we Go had ahead. this start here in 2018 on the chart where we went up for two years to three years. We've now consolidated for two to three years. If we go back to the 1970s, we can see that same sort of pattern recognition during that inflationary period. Gold went up for two years to three years, consolidated, and then the next rip took it from about $110 to almost $900 an ounce. Now, again, I don't think it's going to go to do a 9X or anything like that. I think a 4X, 3X is probably more in line because people have an option of Bitcoin and crypto now. But nonetheless, the history is repeating here as the inflation numbers are repeating. A couple of questions on gold. A 4X over what time period? I think, again, if you go back to the 70s, that occurred over about a five-year span, five to six-year span. So that's a pretty darn good return. We haven't seen returns on that in gold since the 1970s. That would be sweet. Gareth Soloway predicts that the low for gold will be around $1,615 and that it will break through the channel at around the $1,955 level to test 2070 which is that double top high. He also mentions that if a recession does occur, investors will turn to metals like gold and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Are you ready to call a bottom for gold for 2023? Yes. What yes, level I, mean, that at? I do think those October 2022 lows, which were around $1,615, I do look at that as being the low. You have a beautiful channel. We just have to break through that channel, which is around the $1,955 level. If that happens, you'll test 2070, which is that double top high. And then once that's gone, then you're going to see the money rush in. And if you think about it, if a recession does occur, which is the likely scenario, are investors going to still want to be in stocks the, with the fact that the Fed can't stimulate and get us out of a recession? What if we're in a three, four-year recession? Where's money going? The answer is there's two places. There's metals like gold, maybe silver, and then there's cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Gareth Soloway discusses silver's underperformance and how it is slightly underpriced due to it being an industrial metal. He predicts that if inflation stays high for a longer period of time, silver will rush up and eventually outperform gold as it historically has. The gold-silver ratio currently around 83. Do you think that silver is underpriced? Does it have more upside percentage-wise than gold at this point? It is slightly underpriced, but for re for good reason. So remember, we have to remember it's an industrial metal. So if, yeah. if the thinking is like mine, that again, it, the economic situation is going to slow down, then the industrial side of demand is going to slow as well. And I think that's why you're seeing that underperformance in the near term here. But ultimately, it's still a metal. And if inflation stays high for a longer period of time, you are going to see silver rush up and eventually it will out perform gold like historically it has. It's just this period of uncertainty with the economy and likely recession is keeping it under wraps. I still like it as a long though. I think for me, the pure play for being pro a protection player of my assets, mm -hmm. gold. But if you want that beta, that, that alpha, I should say, that return, then silver is where you got to look probably late second half of, the, of 2023. The industrial use factor is expected to keep silver from breaking the $30 level this year, but it may likely test its highs. A breakout is expected to occur in 2024, triggered by a return to industrial demand, or at least the expectation of it. What's your 2023 
silver outlook? Yeah, so I, I think silver will likely test its highs. I don't see it breaking okay. the $30 level this year. And the main reason for that is that industrial side. I think that keeps it from really breaking out. Now, granted, from $21.80 right now where silver is to $30 is still a tremendous return just to get back to those highs. But again, my guess is the breakout probably occurs in 2024. In 2024. And what would trigger that? I think that's just more of the same in terms of the economics picture, maybe getting a little clarity, maybe a re return to a little bit more of industrial demand as we get later in 2024, or at least the expectation of that. And then okay. it becomes the asset to be in with inflation still elevated. Final thought, because in the midst of all of this chaos, we have huge geopolitical developments as well, which obviously play a role in safe haven assets like gold and in what Bitcoin is supposed to be a safe haven asset. We've got a conflict in Ukraine and Russia. Obviously, that continues to escalate. But now we have a Russian fighter jet shooting down a U.S. surveillance drone over the Black Sea. This is the first direct military confrontation between the U.S. and Russia since the start of the war in Ukraine. And the Kremlin has been warning that the U.S. needs to cease hostile activity near its border and said that it's going to retrieve the wreckage of this American drone and take it from there. And of course, this is causing some backlash from the US in terms of rhetoric. How concerned should we be about it? So to be honest, I'm not super concerned at this point if we saw ratcheting up of the aggressive stuff past this point. But I think right now, this is par for the course, which is you have a little tit for tat kind of thing going on where Russia just says, hey, listen, you guys are supplying Ukraine with all this aid. We're going to do these little things to at least show you that we have some strength and we have some skills to make you hurt mm -hmm. a little bit. It doesn't remedy the situation. But for me, I mean, to be honest, look at the oil markets. Is that not the biggest kind of pressure that you can put on Russia right now. And when you see this drop, again, do I think that the drop in oil was directly related to this? No. But do I think that also you could also view it that this is actually putting more pressure than anything else that the U.S. could do to Russia? Yeah. So you have to connect the dots. Maybe there's something there. Amidst the correlation of assets, diversifying in uncorrelated assets is crucial. Gold, gold miners, and defensive plays like Amgen and IBM may be good long-term moves. However, the tech trade may not be a safe bet in the event of a recession. For me, it would try to be diversified in some of the metals, specifically gold. I think gold miners will really start to benefit. If we remember when inflation was at 9%, gold miners did horribly because the price of gold wasn't keeping up with their costs going up. Now we see gold starting to go up and that's where the miners can really thrive. So if we see inflation, let's say coming down to 3%, but gold's up 20% a year, those miners are going to be just absolutely in a perfect scenario. So gold, gold miners. And I think you start looking at some of the defense of place. Like, what do people still need in a recession? They need drugs. So something like Amgen. Amgen would be an interesting play trading at the lower end of the chart recently. And maybe something like an IBM that pays a good dividend. I think people have to start looking for the safety play versus the tech trade. The tech trade honestly has been so hot the last few days because everyone's rushing out of banks. I think that's a false flag, if you will. I think you got to be a little careful with the tech stocks because when a recession does hit, they're going to be the ones hit the worst. That's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave your opinion in a comment and hit the like button. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already. Thank you and see you in the next video.